In this video we're going to be doing a Try Hack Me box called Lessons Learned and I think it's a particularly interesting box because it's kind of based from like a pen tester perspective so I think the person that created it perhaps is a pen tester or certainly was a pen tester and they've come across an issue before where they might have taken down a client's production database by using an or statement as opposed to an and statement. So this box really is to kind of highlight the dangers of testing in production systems, what can go wrong and why you should be using these and statements instead of or statements. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so if we read the description of this lessons learned machine, it reads that it is a relatively easy machine that tries to teach you a lesson, but perhaps you've already learned that lesson. Let's find out. Treat this box as if it were a real target and not a CTF. Get past the login screen and you will find the flag. There are no rabbit holes, no hidden files, just a login page and a flag. Good luck. And then it gives us our target address, um, which in this case, this challenge very much is trying to get you to just focus on that login page. Don't go down any, any rabbit holes. Don't try and port scan. Just focus on the login. Okay, so I bounce to the URL in the description and to start with I want to open up Kaido instead of Burp Suite. So the reason for this is that I want to showcase how to do this from like a free perspective and the Burp Suite Community Edition does have rate limiting on their brute forcing unless of course you were to use one of the additions such as uh, Turbo Intruder. So I'm just going to continue as a guest and then create a project. I'm just going to call it test. Now that we have our project, we can turn our intercept on, go back to our application, just type in any old random bit of text and we have intercepted the request there. So what I want to do is then send that to repeater just so that I can mess with that later. Uh, sorry, not repeater. This is called re replay. So I'm used to burp talk. And then also send that to automate as well. So I'll just turn off queuing for now. Let's go to automate and actually, no, let's go to replay first to see what the request does and scroll down to the bottom we get like an in, invalid username and password so what's interesting is it should be possible to enumerate users because it's telling us the username and the password is invalid so if we were to guess the correct username we should just get an invalid password which the error response would signify whether a username exists or doesn't exist so let's go to automate and let's remove the text out of here and then set a placeholder. Now we have our placeholder, we can just select a simple list, load that from a file and I'm going to use my word list folder here. I'm going to go into set lists, usernames names and then names.txt and you can see that a number of different first names has been added into our simple list so I should just be able to load this uh, sorry no just be able to um, run this now and you can see it's already started with over a thousand requests in less than a few seconds. So I'm just going to let this run and 
then if we can spot any anomalies between either the status code or the length then that should indicate whether there is an existing user or not. So the scan has now finished and all the statuses are 200 so there's no way of differentiating between a correct user and incorrect user. However we can filter the length and we've got a number of users which are 1432 in length whereas the others are 1445 in length. So if we have a look at one of these, let's uh, look at the Arnold example. If I go all the way down I get just an invalid password. So that implies that the username is correct and we just need to now bypass the password. So let's go back to replay and then we can use Arnold as our user and I'll just confirm that in the response. Uh, it does indeed say invalid password. So now what we can do is use our SQL bypass technique with just a single quote and then we want to use an AND statement instead of an OR statement because in this case using an OR statement will end up breaking the database because it's most likely on, an, on a delete or update function which would essentially take the whole database down because OR1 equals 1 is always going to be true. So let's try with an AND statement with an AND1 equals 1 and then have our double dash to end the quote and a space and then if I run that we get a message saying that it has worked, we get the flag etc. So let's just try that on the application itself just so that you can see that clearly. I'll go back here and then I'm just going to turn off my interceptor and paste that statement in there. It doesn't matter what we put for the password because the username field is vulnerable to, to SQL bypass. Just try that again with a space. And there you go. We then get the flag and it says, well done, um, you bypass the flag without deleting it. And essentially we didn't use the malicious, sometimes malicious, or one equals one. So we can just go back and then try that and change that to an or, now that we have already completed the box. Doing exactly the same thing. And then we get a completely different error message saying that uh, we did the SQL injection basically on a delete statement. Now the flag is gone, everything's been deleted, and we need to now restore the box. So for a CTF, this is completely fine, but it's a valuable lesson that many pen testers have learned, particularly when working on client sites, on production systems, having to explain to a client that you've broken their database is not fun at all and uh, it's something that you only ever do once. Hope you've enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, do all that business.